Hey everyone, thanks for hanging out. It's Andrew from iDownloadBlog here with macOS Sierra. Let's take a look at all the new features, starting off with a simple name change. OS X now has become macOS, so we have macOS Sierra. Next up, there are two new Sierra wallpapers, Sierra 1 and Sierra 2, both of that mountain range. We also now have support for tabs pretty much everywhere in the system. It'll work in both first and third party application. So things like text edit and pages and mail and even a lot of third party applications take advantage of this. So things like a photo editor would allow you to have multiple photo tabs open at the same time. So just built in native support for tabs other than what we had in the past. Things like Finder and Safari already had them, but now there are more places. We also now have picture in picture. This is a great new feature inside of Mac OS Sierra. So any video inside of Safari that's a native HTML player will automatically have it built in and third party uh, ones can add it via a new API, but it really just allows you to resize the window. You can put it in any of the four corners so I can throw it in the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, just by dragging it into those spots and it'll snap into that corner. You can resize it to about a quarter of the screen. You do have control so I can pause the video while it is in picture in picture and of course it just floats over top whether you're changing spaces applications it'll always just be on top and you can click that little button and it'll jump right back into the window where you found it when you're done watching you know whatever it is sports or a great I download blog YouTube video Optimized storage is a great feature that's been talked about a lot and allows you to really save a lot of space on your computer. I've seen people getting easily 25 gigabytes of space out of a computer that's really already filled up. You simply go to about this Mac, go to storage and hit manage and you'll have this nice little drop down of different ways that you can save space. So first off, putting some things in iCloud. Uh, the second optimized storage there will automatically delete you know, large attachments from your files, delete already watched movies and TV shows and just store them in iCloud for you. You can also go in and actually see all of your files so I can see what inside of my computer is taking up a bunch of space between just my documents, my downloads folder, or even just the file browser in general. So I can really easily see which is taking up space and I can remove them if I need to. I can go to applications. I can see all of my applications sorted by name or by size. I can view them with that little magnifying glass or delete them with the X button, or I can click on open application in the menu bar if I'd like to. I still have options on the left hand side to see how much space is available in iCloud, in mail, things like GarageBand, and even trash. And the trash can also be turned on to automatically delete itself after 30 days, also helping save space if you don't do that often. Metal, Apple's low level graphics system has been ported over to the Mac now so you can take advantage of that on newer applications that support Metal. So it's gonna be really great for games or photo editing applications to really get lower down in the system and be able to have more performance without using more battery life. The console got a nice new makeover. That's what it looked like before and this is what it looks like now. It's been much more simplified. It looks a lot nicer. It allows you to break everything down more quickly into different types of reports in your system, your computer as a whole. On top, you still have the options to clear the menu or reload or just view the activities that are currently going on on your machine. So a really nice, just new simple makeover for console. If you're one of those people who get into console off often, this is very useful. The installer is now much more smaller when you're doing the initial install. The Apple file system is a next generation file system that'll be coming on future versions of Macs. The USD file format is now supported and HFS standard is no longer supported inside of Mac OS. So a few different changes and advancements in the file system and something we'll see more of in the future. Moving on to Notification Center. First off, it has a brand new look. It is a light background, even if you have dark mode turned on. If you are familiar with iOS, it obviously looks very similar to how it looks inside of iOS now. Third party applications until updated do have that darker background, but they can update to use the lighter background like many of the stock widgets that you have inside of Notification Center. So spoiler alert, there is Siri now on Mac OS and we'll touch more on Siri at the end of this video. But if you did do some different searches, so if I was searching for maybe some specific photos, I wanna find some photos of Mac OS Sierra, I can actually pin those right into Notification Center and they're always updating. So if it was something like a certain set of files, like if I wanna search for any files with the name draft or the title, the word draft in the title, I can pin that in here. Every time I save one of those files, it'll show up in that list. So a really nice way to keep up to date. 
you can also drag anything out of Notification Center. So if I'm working on a note, I can drag a file out of it or even an image right here into my document, whether it's a text or an email or notes. Accessibility has a few good improvements inside of Mac OS Sierra. First off is dwell control. This brings support for hardware that uses a headband or eye movements to track input from a user with limited mobility and vision improvements via new color adjustments that you tint the entire display to a certain color. So a good few updates here for accessibility, great for those users. Apple Music got some nice overhauls as well. Unfortunately, I'm not a subscriber. My trial has come and gone, but we can look at a few of the new features inside of iTunes. It was not the whole iTunes update that everyone was hoping for, but a few good enhancements. So there is a new look. You can easily discover new music, browse exclusives and new releases easier than before. See curated playlists, both that are kind of advanced machine learning for you, as well as ones that are human curated that that are you know one of kind of Apple Music's big you know gets is they have those curated uh, playlists for you so you can see different editors down there below and if you switch to the mini player you can actually view lyrics on any of the Apple Music tracks of course if it is if it is not an Apple Music track you do have to uh, add the lyrics yourself it will not auto populate but lyric support is added for those Apple Music subscribers context a couple updates here first off people's profile images if there is no image or name attached so if i just have a number anywhere you see their profile photo will just show up as this kind of silhouette with that light gradient background going behind there so messages or in itunes or everywhere anywhere you may see that and now third-party applications can also share their information with the contact list so i can have different apps from the app store adding their information into contacts for me Continuity, two big ones here. First up is the shared universal clipboard. Really great feature. I can copy something on my iPhone, iPad, or another Mac, and it'll just sync that clipboard between any of my devices. And auto unlock. I can actually automatically unlock my Mac using any Apple Watch running watchOS 3. Now I can have a more complicated password and automatically unlock it using my watch. Disk utility. Aside from those file system updates that we've already looked at, Partitioning is now easier than ever inside of Disk Utility. I can choose the drive. I can now visually see what I'm doing to my drive via this pie chart here. I can easily name it, choose any of the actual file systems that I'd like, and just a lot easier, more visual uh, than it was in the past, which was kind of basically just based on text. Finder, a few new updates here as well. Just like we looked at at the beginning for optimized storage, I can have the trash automatically delete itself after 30 days. So if you don't clean it often, it's a nice easy way to actually keep getting that storage back. If you're sorting items by name, there is a new option to keep the folders at the top. So to have the folders, then everything else sorted alphabetically by name. Windows will now kind of snap to one another. It's not a giant graphical snap like you may see on the window side of things or when you're using full screen apps. But as I approach the side here, you can see it just sticks. My mouse is kind of moving side to side here, but it is sticking to the side of the actual window here or the wall. And it does it to different windows aside from the edges. So if I'm trying to line things up manually and put them where I need them, it will kind of jump to those areas, which makes just window management just a little bit easier. Another little touch that you may not even notice. Inside the menu bar, if I hold down command, I can rearrange or drag and drop any of the third party menu items now. So really easy to keep your menu bar nice and clean and organized how you like. And using the audio drop down, I can actually now choose the outputs without having to choose option. Before you would hold option, click audio, you could choose your output. Now you can choose output without having to change anything. Inside of Gatekeeper, they've removed the option to run unsigned applications. However, there is an easy workaround, there's a multitude of ways, but the easiest way is simply to right click on an application and hit open. Once you've done it once, it'll remember that for the future. Also now, third party applications can now include iCloud and iCloud Drive support. Previously, this was limited to just those running through the Mac App Store. And if you are running an unsigned application, it'll put them random places on the disk instead of the applications folder, which will prevent some hacking attempts from looking inside of that folder iCloud Drive, a couple huge ones here for iCloud Drive is you can now actually sync your desktop and documents folder through iCloud. 
This is awesome. If you have multiple Macs, it'll actually keep your documents and your dashboards in place, as well as if you go onto your mobile, if you open the iCloud Drive application, it'll show you everything from your desktop and your documents. So really handy if you have multiple devices seeing all that together. However, this does actually use your iCloud storage space, so you do have to keep an eye on that. For the keyboard, there's improved autocorrect suggestions with machine learning and differential privacy. And you can also enable or disable autocorrect options independently. So correcting spelling, capitalizing words, and period after double space. As far as lookup goes, there are improvements here. It looks a lot nicer and they're using, again, differential privacy and machine learning to help give you more accurate lookup things. So that's when you're looking up a different things like in notes, if I force touch here on uh, Jason Bourne, it'll give me a nice uh, preview based on like the movie or the Wikipedia page based on machine learning. It's going to kind of have an idea of what I'm in particular looking for when I do that lookup on uh, the words Jason Bourne. Mail, a few nice enhancements to mail if you are someone who uses Apple stock mail application. First off, there are some new nice filters. I can filter down and see just my unread messages or just my flag messages. So similar to how it is inside of iOS 10. I can also now see everything, the messages that are threaded here on the right, they've changed order. So now the newest messages are down at the bottom and the oldest messages are up at the top. So they've kind of swapped that around from how it was in the past. And some of the preferences have been moved around in the preferences pane. Messages got a huge update inside of iOS 10 and there are a few good enhancements here as well. First, inline previews of things. So if it's a video or if it's a GIF or if these web previews, you can actually see a little clip it. So if I'm sending over the new GoPro drone and the new GoPro cameras, it give a little preview inside of the window. Unfortunately, it does not support the bubble and full screen effects like it does on iOS. It'll just say this was sent with confetti or sent with slam, whatever the actual effect may be. If you're looking at emoji when sent by themselves, they will be three times larger. But as soon as you start adding some text, it shrinks back down to the normal size it was in the past. So by themselves, very large with text back the normal size so it matches in line with the text that you're sending. There is also tap back feature. So if I hold on to someone's response, I can send them a little, you know, a thumbs up or a heart or a ha ha, just a few different options for those tap backs without having to send a full message. Notes, one really great feature that I love inside of notes, and that is uh, the collaboration. So I can share notes with people. So if I, if I have my shopping list here, I want to send that over to my girlfriend so we can both see the list, add to the list and check things off the list. So there's a new collaboration button inside the top. I can copy a link or simply search through my contacts and find someone there that I want to particularly invite. So a nice new feature here. If you're someone who uses the notes, I love notes and I really like being able to share these and collaborate with people now. Photos has gotten a huge enhancement here, really taking over from iPhoto. Their new vision improvements for the computer learning, and it's more able to accurately tell different people's faces and sort them in the actual people's tab. It can also recognize different scenes and objects like animals or a fence or a sunset. Inside of the places view, it now displays them on a world map so I can see where all those individual photos were taken. So I can see my photos out here from San Francisco. I can just double tap on those images and pull them up and actually go ahead and view those images by themselves. They have actually kept track of the places before. There always was a places tab, but now they just display them slightly differently inside of the photos application. Particularly, they show them on that big world map, which is just kind of easier to see when you're looking at them from a high level. We can also go to featured memories or favorited memories. I have a couple here that I favorited. So I have Bahamas. I can open that up. It has the, the location, you know, the name based on the location and the date. It has all the images broken down. And if they're kind of duplicate images, uh, you know, if I took a bunch of the same thing, it'll kind of hide the ones that are very similar. So I'm not seeing a bunch of, you know, repetitive images. On the bottom, it'll show me related memories, you know, ones that are maybe based on the same people or the same location. So you can see the location there on the map. And on the top, it just has this little mini slideshow. Not only that, but because of the scene recognition and the Siri input, I can actually search for different photos. So I can say, show me photos of the water. And it'll actually search through my library and find any photos that I've taken on the water. And it'll combine all those together and I can scroll through and see those. So it works for many different things like show me pictures of animals or sunsets or people or based on a location or a date. 
So really awesome. I really like this searching feature. I love being able to say, show me sunsets. And it just shows me all of my sunset photos without having to dig through really great computer learning here. Obviously, this is not something new to Apple. Others have had this. Google Photos has had similar features, but it's really nice to see that starting to come here into Mac OS and into the native photos application. Of course, you can do this on iOS as well. There had been some improvements to editing, not much. Obviously, you can still use third party applications to come in here and edit your photos using those extensions, but using Apple's built in one, there is a new slider under light for brilliance. So you can change the amount of brilliance in your photos, kind of livens it up a little bit. So just a new slider that Apple's added inside of the light when you're editing photos using Apple's native controls and not an extension of a third party application. And when you do make those edits, you can actually now edit live photos. So you can see that live designation in the corner. You can edit live photos now in Mac OS. Safari has a few great improvements here. First off, extensions for Safari are being removed from the web store and they're being instead included in the Mac app store. So applications like 1Password can include their web extension in their app and have it installed there instead of through the browser. The uh, Safari will now also have this little pop-up that allow you to block uh, plugins from running on sites, so like Flash or QuickTime or Silverlight. So I can have it trust this website completely, so every time it pops up, I can say not now and it'll continue asking me next time, or I can trust the website uh, forever. Also, we looked at this briefly before, and that is the inline videos. You can actually now use picture in picture. If you don't know how to use it for YouTube, you simply right click twice, right click once and the YouTube menu appears, right click again, and the actual picture in picture menu will appear. So it will work with, uh, with YouTube as well as other HTML based videos. The last big feature inside of Safari is Apple Pay. That's right, Apple Pay is coming to the web using any website that supports Apple Pay, like Lululemon, you can go to complete your order, hit Apple Pay, it'll automatically pull in things like your address and you can verify that payment through your iPhone or Apple Watch. And of course, we now have Siri on the Mac, the, probably one of the most advertised features and that really allows us to do a bunch of different things. Siri lives in the menu bar, in the dock or even using a keyboard shortcut. The keyboard shortcut that Apple kind of highlights is holding down command and spacebar. So similar to the spotlight pop-up, but if you hold them, it'll invoke Siri instead. I can search through my photos, I can search through photos online, so I could search for a gazelle. It'll pull back image results and I can actually drag it right out of Siri into a document or an email or a text that I'm working on. So really nice for working with files uh, that we could not see before on you know, iOS. Of course, you can do the same old stuff. You can search for the weather or my calendar or a message or FaceTime, a lot of those uh, sports scores, but unfortunately they don't have support for third-party applications. So I can't do things like hail an Uber and I can't even actually control HomeKit as of this moment. So as always, Siri has a lot of room for improvement, but it is a welcomed addition. So that pretty much covers it. There are over 60 new features inside of Mac OS Sierra. Please go ahead and subscribe, ask any questions in the comments. And until next time, it's Andrew for iDownloadBlog.